guys, how's it going? It's uh, me again, I'm here on Wednesday night. Um, actually, a little trade secret, I'm recording this on a Tuesday night, but we're gonna get it out to you on Wednesday. Um, we miss you, we really wanna just get you some messages, some something to chew on while you guys are away from Awaken, keep ministering to you. And today what we wanna talk about is, Easter means you are never alone. I mean, I know like right now it probably feels like you're alone a lot, and that's real. I mean, I know for me, I've felt that way. I feel like it's just, you know, it's me and my wife and my daughter, but um, I miss people. I miss hanging out with people. I miss coming to Awaken. I miss going to church. I miss that community, and it's something I, earn, I yearn for. And um, But I wanted to start off with a little story from my past. I wanted to, I know some of you may have heard this story before, but I feel like it's it, it'll kind of drive home a point. And so when I was really little, when I was young, uh, and a very much smaller person, uh, my parents were away for the evening, and my, me, it was just me and my brothers, and I decided I was going to kind of like stash out in the back of my dad's old car. So this old car he has was this tiny little trunk, and I was going to hide there, because I was mad at my brothers, and I wanted to get away, and I wanted to be alone, right? And um, so I, I get in there, and I close the door, and I'm hanging out in there, and I'm like, oh, they don't know where I am. Look at me. I'm all alone. And then all of a sudden, I realized that I had locked myself in and given myself no way to get out. And I'm not a very claustrophobic person, but in that moment, <laughs> you don't have any room. Uh, it's very uncomfortable, and I'm stuck in the trunk of a car, a very small car with a very small trunk. And I can't get out. I... I'm stuck, I don't think anybody's ever coming for me, I have no clue when I'll get out of there. And I was probably crying at this point. And luckily, I hear uh, my parents drive up in the driveway. They're, uh, they just got home, and so I find a hole in the bottom of this trunk. And it's an older car, so there's a little like, rusted hole in the bottom of the trunk, and I stick my arm down in there, and I find a gallon jug, a plastic gallon jug that was underneath the car. I grab it by the handle and I, st handle and I start bashing it around and thrashing it. Yeah, help me! <laughs> Just screaming, hoping that somebody would hear me and figure out that I was stuck in this trunk all alone. And it's probably one of the, the times I felt most alone was when I was stuck in this, in this car with, with what I felt like was no way to get out. And so I know like in this time right now, we probably all have those feelings like, man, just, I can't see my friends. I'm not at school with my friends. I can't go to Awaken. I can't go to the mall. I can't go to a restaurant. And there's a lot of isolation and it can be lonely. And sometimes being temporarily alone is a good thing. You can, spend time listening and, and in your thoughts and in your prayers, but nobody wants to be lonely. And there's a big difference there from, from alone and lonely. Now the disciples experienced something like this. You can imagine being a disciple and giving up everything you knew, everything you knew, all your, your dreams, your hopes, your, the, what you thought you knew before you met Jesus, you gave up all your your job, your money, your, your life as you knew it, you gave up to follow Jesus. And you loved Jesus with all your heart. You followed him everywhere. And then all of a sudden, Jesus is crucified. And he's gone. And all these plans you had to travel the world and, and spread, spread the, the, the news of Jesus and, and do God's work hit a huge roadblock. And you're like, you're, you're thrashing. You're wondering, like, what do we do? I don't, I don't know what's going on. And so then Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday comes, and Jesus is resurrected. He comes back. And it's this amazing thing where, where you thought he was gone, even though he told you he'd be back in three days. You didn't get it. And you're a disciple, and you're just like, wow. Jesus is back. And then Jesus says he's going to leave again. And you've got to be like, wait, how, how is this? Why can't you stay? 
Why can't you be here with me? Like, how lonely would that have been? I mean, this, this is somebody they love. They spend years of their life with every day. And he says he's going to move on. But Jesus also says, I, it's better for me to go because I'm going to send you a helper. And that's what it says in John 16, 7. So I want to read that out of my Bible right now. John 16, 7. Find it. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. What a statement that is. Like, this is Jesus. He just resurrected from, the, from being crucified after three days. And he's saying, it's better for me to go and send you the Spirit. Send you Holy Spirit to come and help you. That this is better. Oh, what a statement that is, you know? And, and this is something, as a disciple, you would be like, I don't get it, you know? Like, how is this possible, Jesus? I watch you walk on water. I watch you heal. I watch you do all of these things. How is it possible that you leaving is better? But Jesus knew that if the Holy Spirit came, that the Holy Spirit could be with all of them, and they could disperse, and they could send the, go the good news of the gospel throughout all nations. Um, in Acts 1, 8, the Bible says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Holy Spirit was with the disciples wherever they went. He lived inside of them. He empowered them to spread the gospel, to have courage when they were thrown in jail, when they were persecuted, when they were beaten. They found joy in the fact that they had been persecuted for Jesus. And how amazing is that? There was no fear. There was never any loneliness. They're in jail, and they feel the presence of God. They feel alive and not alone. There was no loneliness there in the Holy Spirit. So what I want you guys to think about uh, in the next week or as you're listening to this is what are some ways you feel alone? What are, what are some ways in which you could use that, that, that time with the Holy Spirit to help you from feeling lonely? Um, I read some pretty, some pretty tough statistics about this lockdown time and this quarantine where there is, I mean, depression and things are on the rise. And how amazing would it be if, if we can watch the Holy Spirit just spread throughout this nation, throughout the world right now to comfort those who are feeling down and depressed or feeling alone, that they can know that if they just call on the Holy Spirit, he is there. Those, those who follow Christ, those who are saved, those who are Christians and walking their faith out, they have the Holy Spirit with them. And that's an amazing thing. The same Holy Spirit that the disciples had with them. The same Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus. That same Holy Spirit can live in us. And empower us to do amazing things. To, have, to live without fear. To live without loneliness. To really just be, to be who we were meant to be. And so I really want to send you off kind of with that note. Um, and let you know this is why Easter means that we're never alone. The Holy Spirit has come after resurrection and 40 days later when Jesus ascends into heaven, he sends the Holy Spirit. You know, I was listening today, I was listening to Acts on the, the Bible app. Maybe you guys, I don't know if you guys know this, I just figured out today that the Bible app can actually play for you. Like it'll read the Bible to you, which is awesome for me because I don't always have time to sit down and read something but I can listen to something while I'm doing something else. And so that's, that was a really awesome thing for me. So I'm listening to Acts in the Bible app, and it's just phenomenal the works that the, that the disciples were doing. Like immediately after Jesus leaves and the Holy Spirit comes, and, and there's 3,000 added in a day, and then it's up to 5,000, and, and just they're spreading God's word like fire. And it was so incredible. And I mean, I say all that to say that, that you know, when... When we get saved, when we, when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into us. And we don't have to fear about loneliness. We don't have to be afraid of being alone. You know, Jesus 
was very lonely before he uh, he could have been very lonely before he he died. His friends, as he's being crucified, a lot of his friends betray him. They desert him. You know, his one of his people who was closest to him, and Judas turned him in for some silver, and uh, I mean that's hurtful. But Jesus overcomes that. He overcomes those obstacles, and he defeats death. He's resurrected. He ascends into heaven. He sends us the Holy Spirit. And it's so empowering. So this is why Easter means you are never alone. Um, Let's close in some prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for this technology that we're able to keep in contact, that we're able to to have some sort of of medium to be able to get together when the world is, is kind of turned upside down. Um, I, I pray that, that this would be over soon, Lord, that your will would be done, that through this you would bring people to Christ. I know this was not your design, this was not your desire, but this is, this is a product of, of not you, um, but you can use things that are evil, you can use things that are, are dirty and not of you, and you can use them for good. And I ask that you do that, Lord. I ask that this be over soon, that we can meet again soon here at the Awaken Youth Center, and I see all my friends as soon as possible. Dear God, I give you so much praise. I give you so much glory. I love you so much. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your Son who you sent to die for us. I give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys.